Uh, call into order the June 10th Parks and Recreation Advisory Board meeting. We start with the roll call. Yes. Um, Aaron Angel is not here. Scott Conlon? Here. Thomas Davis? Not here. Paige Lewis? Here. Sam Libby? Here. Nicholas Novello? Here. And Council Liaison Sean McCoy? Present. All right, let's move on to the approval of the agenda. Do we have any ideas? I was just going to ask if we could go to 6A first and let uh, Sherry make her presentation so that we can go back to our old business after that. I think that's a really considerate and very kind of you. I think we made, made you wait in previous meetings, Steve. Which is, um, I'm okay with that, but if you have any concerns, you might want Okay, so then if that's the case, then uh, is there a motion to approve the agenda as amended with six item six A at the top, uh, right after approval agenda, right? Yeah, I'll move to uh, approve the agenda as amended. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, then we'll come back to previous months. Then it's oh, do we have a second? I'm sorry. Second. No second. Okay. All in favor? Okay. Cool. Follow the procedures. Okay, so then let's let's go straight to that then, and then we'll come back to approval of previous months minutes. So, Sherry, please start off. Thank you. Um, so, I do have some remarks uh, that I'll just read because I get nervous. <laughs> Sherry Malloy, 1632 Sherman Way, Longmont resident of 40 years, here to speak to item 6A, Longmont's Open Space Extension. I have these brochures. I We, we were here before, and we passed them out, so if you need another one, maybe we can pass those around if somebody would like to look refer to that. Um, but I do thank you for making this an agenda item and um, and considering this uh, <coughs> this issue. Um, as you may recall, I'm a member of a small group advocating to have our city council place the extension of our current open space tax in perpetuity on the November 5th ballot. <coughs> our original open space and use tax of 0.2 cents was passed by Longwood residents in 2000 and extended in 2007. That's two cents on every ten dollars spent. This tax will sunset in 2034. Just as the voters in Longmont permanently approved the three-quarter cent transportation tax, we believe they will likely support the permanent open space tax extension as well. Lafayette voters extended their open space sales tax indefinitely with 82 percent approval. This is the year for such a ballot issue. There are not a bunch of local tax questions before the voters. At this point, only St. Green Valley School District is asking for a bond election without the need for a tax increase. Having an ongoing established revenue stream would help the City and Natural Resources Department with long-term planning and relieve competition on the general fund. Longmont residents love our open spaces and the many benefits they provide. Some of the obvious experiential benefits residents receive include hiking and biking on trails, Recreation like swimming, picnicking, photography, painting, fishing, and tubing, alternative, alternative transportation connectivity, wildlife viewing opportunity, opportunities, community buffers, and scenic views. Less obvious, yet essential benefits include critical wildlife habitat and movement corridors, protection of forests and riparian health, restoration of native plants and pollinators, safeguarding our water, watershed, Decreasing flooding in riparian areas by stabilizing banks, helping our air quality, and supporting agriculture and local food production. Healthy open spaces have mental and societal benefits. A 15-minute walk in nature improves mental health by elevating mood, reducing stress, and improving memory and concentration. Physically, it lowers heart rate and blood pressure, and it improves our immune system. Our open space program is an amenity with economic values that attract families and business, making Longmont a desirable place to live, play, and work. As Longmont's development continues to flourish and densify, the myriad benefits of the open space program will become only more valuable. To ensure resources are available for the future, we're asking that our city council place this measure on the fall ballot. We have a long-term obligation to protect and maintain our open space lands. That takes resources. Our group has been educating the public and garnering community support on this effort for the last year. We have an appeal we've asked people to sign. So far, we have 946 um, names on our appeal. 
I'm here to ask for Crab's endorsement of this effort. Doing so helps inform City Council to give serious consideration about how they will maintain our valuable open space amenity to align with Longmont's core values. We intend to update City Council about where our efforts are tomorrow evening and formally ask for their direction to staff to be made on June 25th. That's it. Thank you, Sherry, for sharing with us. It's great. Um, so let's open it for some discussion. I don't know if there's any questions or, or um, comments that you want to ask Sherry while she's here. Has City Council had any previous discussion? I don't believe we have kind of, you know, lobbied or talked to a few, and we've been very enthusiastic. Similarly, I met with um, a city manager, and he was also, you know, um, very um, um, kind of enthusiastic about our, our didn't see, you know, I wanted to make sure he didn't see any issues or, or have any, um, you know, any concerns, or did he, you know, just kind of have that conversation. It was a very productive conversation, and he was... I'm enthusiastic. So, um, of course, he's not going to steer council one way or the other, but he, he himself was. So, um, I guess I would say was... nobody has said anything negative. Uh, I don't think that. Uh, I, I think that the majority of folks on council right now would support that. I, I can't think of anybody. Uh, I don't see anybody, you know, railing against uh, taxes, you know, charity, and all that other stuff. <laughs> The biggest question seems to be, why now if it doesn't sunset until 2034? And uh, so the rationale is, as said, development is happening now, kind of gives people a sense that, wow, you know, this is something I can do um, and kind of connect to the value of, um, of open space. Um, and then we want to do it in a presidential group year. That's when you have big turnout. And in the worst case scenario, if we didn't pass this fall, then we have 2028, you know, rather than 2032, waiting till right at the end. So it's just sort of a strategizing, you know, kind of. Um, and truthfully, you know, some of us, there's only a handful of us doing this, um, maybe won't have the bandwidth in <laughs> five or, or eight years. So um, so that's kind of the, that's been the big question is what's the, what's the rush now? Um, so. I, I add that to you, what would be the rationale of waiting? Right. Um, that argument. Right. right. Oh, somebody's coming in. And is it just another city council recommending it? City council would we be asking them to direct staff to, you know, to pursue this with coming up with some language for the ordinance, and then it would come back for um, first and second readings and that kind of thing. But we're we actually were thinking of doing it in July, but then like, well, these things take a little bit of time. We're doing because we're still working events. Like we were at Pride Fest the other day and got a bunch, and there'll be a Juneteenth and. Them. So we'll continue to, co to campaign for it, um, but we wanted to come to count. Our goal was actually 500, and then we were doing so well, we up to 1,000, and right now we're at 946. So we're in very good shape to um, to go forward, and uh, um, we actually might even do it because um, the Natural Resources Department is presenting an update tomorrow night, but David Bell, the director, is out of, was on vacation, and Mayor Peck is also on vacation, so that's why we're going to wait two weeks to come back. For the, but I, I, I take this out because this is, uh, they laminated this for every council member, that uh, these are the core issues that the council is, is interested in focusing on. And of course, uh, climate action and, and uh, the issue around, uh, you know, some of our core services and water and everything. And uh, recreation are you know one of the uh, are some of the most important aspects as we uh, see you know we've built the pillars of, of our community on that so uh, that's that's kind of where we're at and I think that uh, all of council agreed to that and so that's a good thing so we're trying to always stay true and focused on those sort of things so I can't I can't see uh, you know we're <clears throat> we're dealing with interesting times as they say. Uh, you know, people, uh, there are going to be some folks that think that we should, uh, you know, not add anything or do anything like that, but we're always going to have those folks. And that's, uh, that's a noisy minority, not the majority of folks, I feel. I think, uh, uh, was it Louisville you said or Lafayette? Lafayette. I, I think that's a good reflection of, Lafayette particularly is, a, is much more closely aligned to Longmont sort of uh, old town sort of uh, 
uh, you know, small town sort of thinking. Uh, they have teaching in Louisville and Lafayette and Superior area. I have that exposure too, and I feel that that's that's something that uh, we will see here too. And one more thing I didn't say, but um, it's likely uh, Lafayette voted for it, and why we're feeling so confident that Walmart will too, because when the first four words on the ballot are without raising any taxes, that's <laughs> kind of a good indicator for a yes. So I want, to, I want to be digitally friendly too, and make sure that Sam, you have an opportunity to, to speak up. Um, are you, or by the way, are you dialing from like a log cabin? It looks amazing. Uh, but it, do you I want to make sure you have an opportunity to uh, to chime in if, if you have any questions, or comments on? Yeah, it's all <coughs> it's all log cabins in Vermont. That's pretty much all we got out here. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, appreciate the narrative and Councilman uh, McCoy's comments too. I, I would just ask. Um, I'm interested in how the. Uh, how the tax rate compares to other municipal open space taxes. I'm familiar with the county taxes extended last year. Do you, do you happen to know if there are other city level open space taxes that are compared this one? I don't. I defer to Danielle for that. It's David, but he's not here. I can find out. She's I, looking now. Yeah. Looks like she's looking. Um, it, it would be helpful to be able to compare that and say uh, either direction if it's. More then that's a great thing for the city. If it's less, then it's a good deal for voters, maybe. Right. Um, I would think that's the best thing to consider is whether it's uh, an appropriate amount. It's certainly easiest to not change it, I think. Um, but it would also be a chance to consider changing it if it's been insufficient or if it's substantially less than other similar municipalities. So, um, yeah, I'm generally in favor of extending it, like you said, but I also think it's a chance to look at it in the right mode. Yeah, that's an excellent question. We're gonna we should get our facts on that before um, we go to council, and we're actually going to the other board. Somebody else is a tab tonight, and we're going to SAB next week. A web. <laughs> <laughs> so the Boulder County 2024 sales and use tax is 0.125. Point one. Ours. Ours is point two. But it's also a city of Boulder and city of Lafayette. Yeah. 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 That overlays on that. Right. I'm, I've always been really supportive of extending the, so permanently extending this tax. So I mean, I'd be happy to make a motion or not required. I, I want to get there for sure. I, I do want to just, you bring a good point, which is on the agenda, we talk about it as open space tax extension, but it's really not an extension, is it? We're talking about codifying, making it permanent. So so uh, maybe that's just like an agenda proud thing, but more so just to note, is that, is that how city council, or question is, is that how city council is thinking about it too? We, we should be calling it like permanent. Commission to sort of of the... <coughs> I hadn't thought of it that way, but yeah, that's an excellent point. Uh, I think uh, uh, I think I'd be careful about uh, using uh, too permanent of language. I see. Uh, just because people are funny uh, about that. If you just say they're making it permanent, good. If you say it codifying, it starts to have the ring of some of the 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 politicalized, you know, things that are going on right now in regards to, let's say, abortion and things like that. Sure. So we probably want to be careful uh, as much as we all think, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Probably that language means a lot to some folks. It's a Mexican strategy. Okay. I, I would just say if, if you do a, a motion to recommend mm -hmm. that you just Leave that part out and let council yeah, figure, figure out the details of it. It's yeah. really more so the, uh, well, we call it an, it's an extension, right? Okay, so let's talk about what that motion is really going to look like, right? So we talked about, like, okay, um, endorsing this. I really think the action is re a recommendation to a potential action, right, would be a recommendation to city council to pursue, uh, to, re to ask city staff to pursue an investigation. Or pursue this. So what you call a permanent that? extension of the open yeah. space on the November. Just keep it simple. Is it okay? Okay. So no. I misspoke. Um, oh. The Boulder County about um, 
I looked up the ballot language from November 2023, and it was without increasing taxes for 15 years, 0.05%. Zero five. Okay, so less than. So, Paige, do you feel comfortable making that motion? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you um, wanted to. Yeah, no. Yeah. I move that Crowd uh, recommend to City Council that they support a permit extension of the open space talks on November 2024 ballot. <laughs> okay. Uh, do we have a second for that? I'll second. Great. All those in favor? One, two, three, four. Awesome. That's great news. <laughs> Okay, that's great. So I think that means that, that we're, we're good on that topic. It's really exciting stuff. Um, thank you so much, for Sherry, for coming in. Yes, and thank, thank you. All. Yeah, thank you all for serving. You guys posted on the process. Will do, yes. yes. Those, um, what are you using? The, the, is it just to get them let in on there, or in case somebody... What are all the, the signatures for? Oh, this says, we, we the undersigned, urge long <laughs> Mayor of Beth and city council members to protect Longmont's important and sensitive current and future open space areas from the intrusion of damaging urban development. Specifically, we are asking council to place a measure on our 2024 Longmont ballot asking residents to make our 22% Longmont open space sales and use tax permanent for the purpose of land acquisition as well as maintenance and enhancement of open space areas. So you don't use those in case we're just using, you know, this is just because we're kind of, you know, um, we've just been kind of garnering public support and kind of talking to people about the value of open space and, um, and yeah, kind of say there's a lot of people who would like to see this, you know, put on the ballot. Is there a process in mind? It's not, it's not so a formal petition, it's an appeal. Can you do that, though? Petition to put something on the ballot at the city yeah. level? Yes. Yes, we could have done that. That costs a lot of money. You know, kind of get the languages right and run all the copies and we just print it on. It has to be yeah, yeah. voters yeah. of Longmont. X number and yeah. It's the same okay. point. Uh, he's, he's talking about, you know, what if the council has this conversation and says, hey, we maybe we should, uh, you know, look around and see what other communities are doing and if, if 0.2%, uh, 0 .02%, is that what it is? Uh, is is willfully low, and we don't know what might happen in the future. Then maybe we should. You know, but I uh, but I don't think that anybody's going to go down that path. To be honest with you, I just think that that's just a easier just to expand. yeah make it yes, there. That, you know, then we can always expand that. Right. Yeah. yeah. That we purposely did not do that. Make it permanent because that would be a much harder no, that's lift. Fun. It looks pretty in line with other cities from what I'm seeing here in that cursory research. Um, Boulder County seems less, but the uh, city of Lafayette is 0.25. Uh, city of Boulder I just had it, I think it was 0 0.33. 0 0.33. Well, that was I think City of Boulder also has a retail use tax, not only a property tax levy. And so there's a, um, some different overlay to that. Well, then all I can say for certain is that it's similar to Lafayette for this, at this point, but I'll put that together for you guys and send it to you if you like. Yeah, it soon better for me because it's on uh, first reading. And so tomorrow, I think tomorrow we're not. It's you know, just on yeah. zero reading, uh, yeah, yeah, discussion. Yeah, so weeks, in case it comes up, and then I can respond. Okay. Yep, absolutely. I'll send it to you. Fantastic. All right. Thanks, Miss Jerry. Yes, great. Thank Thank you. You. And we're going to move on to back up to agenda item three. <laughs> the approval of previous month's minutes. Anyone have any comments on the previous month's minutes? Is that you or you? No. Any adjustments to make? Any adjustments? No. Do we have a motion to approve the previous month's minutes? Sure. Oh, thanks, Paige. Okay, do you have a second? 
Also, I'm Thanks, Sam. <laughs> All those in favor here. The, I, I don't know how that works. Uh, yeah, you're going to abstain. You're going to abstain, okay. Yeah. But we, okay, taxes. Okay. Yeah, taxes. Uh, cool. All right, so let's move on to old business, which is finalizing the board field trip, which I'm very excited to do. Oh, I really am. Okay, oh, yes. You're fine. Thank you for calling that out. Do we have any public event to be heard? Great agenda item. We don't have any public event to be heard. Thank you again, though, for, for calling me no, and, and just, holding me accountable. Just, Someone will come back and say we didn't do something right. You know? You're right, you're right, yeah, and I should do it right. right I, yep. Okay, let's move on to old business farming the board field trip. So, um, Jeff, you're going to help us talk through this a little bit, but we went back and forth on this in the past two meetings about what we're, gonna, we're kind of leaning towards. I think we're, we're, we've aligned that we want to do the field trip, we want to go and, and be uh, doing the field trip. And we're looking at different. Um, Different times specifically, and okay. Oh, they came around. There's plenty of plenty of things. And it seems like the really the what we're coming down to is August fifth is really the the, the time is going to work. And specifically, the itinerary we have laid out here, which is awesome. Thank you for for yep. carrying this out. Um, do you, do you want to take over from here? It sounds like you are. Sure. I, and it uh, after talking with uh, Scott. Uh, early before the meeting started, it uh, looks like all six of the board members are going to be available by then. We will have a seventh member, and we'll have to just verify with with them. Um, we we talked. Uh, Stephanie and I talked a little bit today about the the tour itself, and we thought that we have kind of a unique opportunity this year that we really have not had in, in the past where uh, the board will actually be able to go on site of three different parts that are going to be under construction. Um, so we'll uh, have, uh, yeah, we'll actually have hard hats and vests and everything for you all to, to go out there and uh, feel like uh, we've got enough time. We'd start at, uh, be here at uh, 5.15 with the van leaving at 5.30, and we'll have everybody back uh, to this building by 8 o'clock, would be the plan. So, hopefully everybody's okay with that. Congratulations on finding a good van. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it, it's really odd that it worked out because before we talked to, to the board, we had staff did a survey, and August 5th was the only date that all really? four months did go as well. So it's uh, pretty pretty odd that it worked out for everybody. So uh, we will provide uh, some kind of uh, sandwich that night uh, on the in the van uh, so that you have something to eat. And again, we'll get back here at 8 o'clock. That's great. That's great. So we have a line on that. I don't think we need a motion on that, right? No. Okay. no. Okay. Uh, really, really looking forward to it. It's going to be really uh, informational, and I can't wait to take a picture with all of us with the vests on. I'm just going to put it out there. That's going to be my highlight of, the, of it. Okay, then let's move on to new business. Um, we're going to skip over 6A because we covered that already. And it's going to move to the update on the eight parks in five years. Eight and five. Eight and five. Um, and this is, uh, what, that thing's going to be. I need to, yeah, read the familiarizing from last month. I did this in Zoom from Teams, so just a second. Yeah, we wanted to give an update um, just on the eight and five projects. Um, there's a lot going on right now, and it's really exciting. I know, um, so we put together all of the slides, and Daniel's going to help me 
um, because our team is doing some of these projects as well. Um, but as you guys know, we have eight projects identified um, to be completed in five years. So Clover Meadows, Neighborhood Park, Prairie Creek Community Park, Synthetic Turf, Fox Meadows, those are all three under construction right now. Union, and we'll get into that um, is it in the works when we get to that slide. And then the last four are the ones that we're putting in the CFP to determine what those time frames can be with the funds that are needed to do those projects. So we'll skip on to Clover Meadows. Oh, I'm on the wrong. It's hard for me to have too many panels. So Clover Meadows. So I don't know how to make this thing go away. But um, so anticipated completion date for Clover Meadows is still fall 24. Um, and this is what we have to, this is as of last Friday. So if you look up here at the, at the plan that has been put together, this is based off the original master plan. It's just a little bit more specific now that we've had the design completed. Um, we have the main entry down here with the playground. Um, then there's the shelter near the playground, the restroom building, and then some um, green lawn space for you know the kids to play. Nothing, no official sports fields, just for practice or whatnot, whatever they want to do. What are the cross streets? Oh, this is Heather Hill Street and Old Ranch Drive. Thank you. Yeah, and if we need to pop out to, to Google, just let me know. You can get it Google. Um, and then up here um, in the north. West, we have an, an apple orchard that's going to be going in, and we're getting, we're working with our um, forestry team. Um, they're actually going to procure the trees once the park is constructed, but all of the irrigation and everything will be set up for that, um, so that we have some of that. You know, it's similar to what we have over at um, Rogers Grove, but a little bit more established. I don't know if you've ever walked through the apple orchard at Rogers Grove. Mm -hmm. um, and then over here we have a bike playground. It's called. So you can kind of see it taking shape here. Um, Um, so it's, you know, we have a, a little bike area over at Dickens, but it's it doesn't have any of these types of features. It's really more earthworms and things like that, logs. So this is actually, um, all of this design was by the same company that just did the Bridget Bike Park and several others in the area. Um, so they're just starting to get them all in, but just some fun ups and downs. They go through some hoops here, some wavy things, you know, up on a little platform and down. Sparks and downs and some rooms. So it should be fun for the kids. And then um, this is the playground starting to take shape. So that is this larger circle. And then over here, you'll see this little circle, which is the, the sand play area. <coughs> so this is one of the play features that's already been delivered and is just put off to the side while they're building. But it's kind of a fun nature themed um, playground. So. Yeah, so every week a lot of progress is made, and um, they're getting ready, they're getting close to uh, the restroom building, <coughs> the prefab modular building, um, to be set as well as the, the shelter, so. Moving on to the next, the next one underway, so Dry Creek. Now this one's not quite as exciting visually, <laughs> <laughs> but it yeah. sure looks a lot better than it used to, <laughs> Um, so this is um, where the old sports fields had originally been located that were failing. This, the turf didn't grow well there. Um, and I'm trying to see, you can't see. So to orient you, I don't know if anyone's been over there. Um, there's the cricket pitch over here on the east side and then the new multi-use sports fields over here. Um, those won't be striped. They will, um, that will allow the recreation programming to strike them for whatever games they're having. Um, and the cricket pitch is actually going to remain natural turf for their choice. Um, so that would, they will get, it will be overseeded and, and uh, improved some. But yeah, they're getting ready to, I think now that this is all graded, they're going to start coming back and putting in the under drain system. Um, and that's really the biggest piece of this is how to get the water out because that was the biggest issue. So, um, there's a room on the side of the cricket pitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's currently there. Oh, that's kind of cool mm -hmm. because I know at the other cricket uh, pitch over at near Carden Acres, mm -hmm. I, I bet you've got a berm there and the, the, the folks are playing all the time. Uh -huh. And now that the United States beat Pakistan, uh, like, I think there's going to be a bigger uh, interest in yeah. cricket. Yeah. And, and there, there is a history where they, they're already been playing there. They can't play there now because of the construction. 
it it's the same as Garden Acres that if you go out there on a Saturday and Sunday, it's pretty packed with oh, yeah. cricket players. So Fox Meadows, so we're going to be under construction yet this month on Fox Meadows. So it's getting ready to be mowed and the fencing is going to be going up. Mobilization for the GC will be occurring. So a lot of activity in the next couple of weeks. Um, we just reached 100% design and we've um, worked, we're working with the contractor on finalizing the, um, the GMP so that we have a, a construction number um, to work from. Um, but that We'll just keep moving forward. It's been nice to have the best value approach on these projects because we established the, con the, cons the contracts last August for all of this work, design and construction, so that it doesn't slow us down transitioning from design to construction like other projects. This one's kind of fun too because it has also more of a nature. That's what, um, in the public process, they chose a nature play for the playground. And um, it's just kind of got fun little things that look like logs and wood that aren't logs and wood, so be more durable. And this one, the other unique feature about this park is it'll have a zip line. So one of the, so there's only a couple in, in Longhorn, so kids like that stuff. So is like the one it? in Mines? The park in Mines? Um, like Wilbur Johnson. I don't know how long it is in here. No, not Mines. Sorry, I meant um, Iowa. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Is that what the kid, the example is what the kids writing there? It is, yep. Mm -hmm. And this was in this still like a half court or something. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, there's a half court right here. Yeah. Yep, and uh, and then it'll also have a bocce court. And um, the shelter, the restroom is here, the shelter is here. So this one, the shelter and restroom are placed sort of between the half court and the playground. The bocce over here, and then this one, you know, this is a, basically a detention basin where this park is constructed. Um, so that the deepest part there is the part that will remain detention in native grass, but otherwise there's going to be a lawn portion there for the kids and whoever wants to play on, on the turf port, portion. And then uh, aside from that, there will be some native grasses and then um, some crusher fine, a combination of crusher fine and concrete. So, I'm going to hand it over to you. <laughs> okay, this is the um, Union Reservoir Interim Trail, and we are going out for a design RFP uh, this year. We had a critical meeting with some other departments today, engineering and water resources, trying to get some questions answered so we can get our RFP out the door. And I'm sorry. Hold on. Oh, there we go. Okay. I had tried to stop the thing and then I really stopped it. Okay. Oh, so it, anyway, this is the this is the interim trail, which is funded separately than the Greater Union Reservoir Master Plan improvements. So this trail is meant to be built and will be in place until which time the Union Reservoir is expanded. Um, so getting to the point where we can get out for a design RFP um, in the near future this year is exciting, and that's where we're at with this one. And you have to go into the uh, into the front gate of Union to access it, or that. And so that is all of it's to be decided. Still, um, it's conceptual right now, but that's the way the Rangers would like it because it's going to make it a lot easier for them to manage everything. Who's on the trail? Yeah, with one ingress egress. Um, I'm like, I was thinking of like Macintosh, but you don't necessarily know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, this will have a technical advisory committee all throughout, especially during that conceptual design phase where we'll hear from rangers, wildlife technicians, everything. So all the different um, values and things will be brought to the table and discussed. Is my next one next, or is it a little bit? Okay, can I ask about it in for a second? Sure. Just a request that as you get into that design, if we can have a, a private discussion about that as well. Um, yeah, it's, absolutely. It's an inter interesting, complex complex, and it'd be a great to have a chance to talk during the design phases about where you guys are thinking and technical committees going, uh, yeah. rather than just reviewing and design when it's already pretty baked. Of course. Yes. Okay. Yeah, recreation would like to be a part of that too. Okay. 
Oh, you are. You're on the tap. Okay. Right. on the tap. All right. I would. I would like to know. That's what I meant. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. That's what I meant. Great. Okay. So now the remaining projects. So all of those are kind of hidden going or under construction. So then the next um, of the park projects that we had included in the CIP were um, the phase four of the Sandstone Ranch. So just kind of showing the bright areas of of what's still to be completed in order to complete what was intended by the master plan. Um, And so that includes the four ball fields and that complex. Um, It included a sports court over by the skate playground, as well as a new playground, score booths, restrooms, and shelters. Um, So as I mentioned, we put it in our 2529 CIP that will be submitted to council in September, October, um, and then we'll have more direction on that. One one response on that. I don't think you need to build score booths. We have them in yeah. limited use of them. That'll be a good piece of that design discussion for sure. Yeah. Oh, score booths. Oh, yeah. Because so if you have them, you generally have to have a volunteer or paid person to do that. And right. most groups just have somebody with a book and are, are doing it. Uh, oh, even way. if you're doing comp- big competition type of things, yes. too. Is that kind of like the concessions as well? Uh, concessions we have gotten out of that world, and I would say that we, my thought would be that we make space for food trucks and that sort of thing mm-hmm. so that they can come in during big events. Um, because what we found is that's when we made money on the evening things, there was not enough. Uh, demand so it, it, we had people out there really for nothing that, mm-hmm. that's what we got out of it okay and this is another one from the open space group the same thing greenway 12 we also submitted it into the 2025-2029 cip so we're looking for council response and direction on that um, and so this would be the final a phase of the St. Frank Greenway. We've, you know, work as you know, we're currently working on phase 13, which goes east from Sandstone Ranch and connects into St. Frank State Park. Goes, we'll be building an underpass to get under the highway and connect into the state park. So this would be the final phase. Phase one through eleven go through the city, and then this phase starts at Golden Ponds and goes west and connects into Boulder County's trail system. And so we're looking to start design in 2026 using conservation trust and open space funds. And like I said, it's it's in the CIP for review and this come up here. And this is, what's this prosecutor here? Well, this is airport. And so this is, um, oh, this is Golden yeah. Ponds uh-huh. and the tracks. Oh, tracks. Okay, yeah, yeah I see. Yeah. I remember it. And that, that building over there is the, is the one... This house? Yeah. Is that it's one kind of just up from the, the city facilities? Yeah. yeah. Right one? Yeah. Kind of across from the same frame road. Yeah. 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 I was just trying to, wow. Yeah, so the trail, and it's currently, in 2011, it was um, the feasibility study was put together and a potential route. Um, it'll be revisited just to validate that feasibility whenever funding's accrued because. This all was studied before the flood, for one, but also just, you know, are there any other ideas? Is this the best location? But what they had planned was to bring the trail along here, and then up here it sticks a little closer to that along that property boundary of the land that will be transferred to the city, and then it pops under the road here to the Zweck property, and then that's where it connects to the Boulder County. On the land transfer, um, we do have six of seven signatures now on the deeds. And I expect the last one this week, so the land will be transferred to the city um, once all of those are received. I, th- I think you should wait like a week before, after David gets here to share that good news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait till something happens. Okay. Yeah. Quick, quick question on this. Is uh, just a connection to the county trail system. My recollection was that that is basically the Pella Crossing trails. Right. Well, and they'll go along the railroad tracks and then over to airport. That's the continuation of those. And then it goes okay. down that east side of this wet property. 
on the east side of Airport Road? Um, east side of the property that's on the it's on the west side of Airport Road. Okay. So it'll go up so to the tracks. It's a planned. It's a planned county trail system. Yeah. Yes. Okay. What's their time frame for that? Just slightly behind ours. I think it's you know if we start design in twenty six. I believe they're starting design in 27, 28. So then we have the Quail Campus Master Plan improvements. Um, as we submitted it in the CIP, it would follow the Sandstone Branch High School logo. Um, and this is the one that's a little different because the master plan originally called it the Ice Arena. Um, so I don't know, we don't know if that would go back to council for review because the thought is to me, um, maybe a pickleball complex would be of more value to the community. So that's a discussion piece to be had. <laughs> um, but in addition to what that element is, then it's also um, additional parking. There would be a creekside labyrinth, a fun little play space, and then uh, some open turf area, and then um, some. There is still another need to expand the irrigation pond a little bit if that work doesn't occur before this project is underway with other projects. And, and I think, Paige, in, in regard to the ice rink, that it wouldn't make sense to build another recreation facility right next to ours. That's, that's why pickleball might be a better opportunity here, but that doesn't mean that an ice rink couldn't possibly go out at Dry Creek or Clark Park or any of the other ones that we've identified over the years. Yeah. But it was originally put in the master plan to have both the rec center and the ice facility in this location. As as a possible location, yeah. We at the at the time we were doing it, we were we just wanted to reserve land if to make sure we had a space if if needed. And then after I believe after this was done the, the first time, um, Dry Creek became an opportunity. Yeah, there's a lot of push that I see, you know, between the ice, uh, the hockey crowd and the, and the pickleball crowd. Although I feel that the pickleball crowd is much more dedicated. Well, they don't pay anything, but that's true. That's <laughs> ice people don't pay money. Pickleball yeah. people don't pay money. No, no, I agree, but they vote. Yeah, sure. And uh, the, the hockey folks uh, pay a lot of money and are really engaged and active with it, but they uh, are really committed to making sure that they're getting their kid to the to the game and to the practice and everything like that, but don't seem to have the same dedication to getting it on the ballot and helping get it funded. I don't know that I agree with that. That's awesome. So this one's going to require a little more public engagement, um, discussion with city council. Um, it's not quite as simple as completing the master plan. Um, the, the, look, look, I want to talk just a little bit about the, the some of the improvements. We don't right now. There's a, there's a dog leg that the, the city owns to to back to Main Street, and there is an, a, a document that says that whoever <coughs> makes the land swap happen first has to pay for improvements to that site, which includes Kansas, which is at the top of, of uh, right in there, as well as the road back down to, um, to uh, Quail Road. And so at some point in time, the museum's gonna need more uh, of parking, but uh, we, we also are trying to work with uh, city engineering and determine does that road that goes up to where the pickleball courts could go could that be a a park road as compared to a dedicated street because the improvements are way more expensive to dedicate it as a street as compared to having just a road in, in the park so those are things that would be discussed along with this as well would that mean that it would be like gravel or I think it could be asphalt, but it doesn't have to have all the curb and gutter and all of those things. 
So this only includes the exterior. This wouldn't include any like upgrades needed to the rec center that's on no. this campus. For now. So what would need the improvement is over here where you have the roundabout and that part into the into there is where you're saying you'd want to put in your curbing gutter and all that. It, I think part of the discussion would be if if that connects roundabout to roundabout, it probably needs to be a street. But if it's just a way to easily get into the to the rec center or up to tennis or pickleball. It, maybe it doesn't need to be as extensive as, as maybe what this was originally discussed. Looks like we could have another cricket court there. <laughs> <laughs> so then that brings us to Dry Creek Community Park Phase 2. Um, so this is a pretty significant um, Phase 2. So what you'll see here, this is the master plan. I've, I've kind of shaded out the areas that have been, either have been, are being, or will be at some point completed. Um, and then the darker areas are the areas that would still need to be included in the space. So um, in this, we have a couple of ball fields. They're not like the sandstone, but more practice fields. Um, a maintenance building um, is a piece of this, which um, would allow some of the maintenance staff to have a zone, you know, a home base in this zone over here. Um, outdoor handball, racquetball. This is when we move the sledding hill. So, you know, we have the sledding hill, we take away the sledding hill, we put back the sledding hill, and then we move the sledding hill. Um, so also sand volleyball, some water, um, a water plaza with interactive water features, and the promenade crossing of Dry Creek. So that becomes a really fun space. Like this whole area, um, it's just, you know, lined with trees and and nice little areas um, for families to gather and kids to play. And, um, then it also had a playground and some more restrooms and shelters. So this one is the furthest out. This one's towards the end of our um, CIP that we just submitted. Um, but to, to Jeff's point on the ice, you know, if it makes more sense here than there, that's kind of where, you know, we have the discussions with Quail to see what we can do with Dry Creek. Where is this space that would, I mean, does this still reserve space for a future rec center or facility mm -hmm. of some sort? Yeah, yeah, it's right here. Oh, it's still there. So it's the pool, the outdoor pool, and the rec center are in this zone right here. I think the one thing Stephanie would need to remember is that if a, a large facility is ever built there, there has to be a second entry exit into there that might tie over to the mountain, mountain avenue. Mountain Drive? Right? Yeah. So yeah, they'll have to be considered with that. Yeah. And I think this may be um, drivable. I can't say either way, but right. that'll be a consideration for sure. We're just trying to get these parking like that walkway. There are parkings. I wish I had the rendering. But there was a rendering from the master plan, and I don't have it right here right now. Um, to see what it was, but it was all conceptual. So well, your, direct, your earlier slide, uh, where where was that with the uh, cricket? With oh, so the so. cricket. So it the cricket ended up being here. So this is from the master plan when they didn't know what the configuration of the sports oh. fields would be, and I don't know if they had originally planned to put it in the middle, which seemed odd. But yeah, um, it, it ended up being over here. Yeah. So this okay, is where it really is. Kind of, okay, mm -hmm. This is. This is the conceptual plan literally from the master plan. Right. So there will be additional sports fields beyond what the ones that are there. Yes. No, no, not, not new programmable sports fields. To the to the west there would be there would be ball. two ball yeah. fields. And that yeah. that would be the addition of the sports fields, yeah. 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 And will the disc golf still be gone? No, I, I, well, I think that, because a lot of that's where the rec center is, so then, you know, it's, does disc golf kind of, you know, migrate within here? Once it's again, it's discussions. Right now, but. Um, disc golf is a pretty easy thing to accommodate, you know, just finding some fun routes and things. Um, but this is, I mean, this master plan was completed a bit ago. Whenever we get to this point, it's just going to, you know, everyone around the table, and let's see what, what we can do with it. 
that that can do anything else you're calling it? This this one? This is specific to the park versus the parks recreation and trails master plan. So the other slides that I have I can do during staff update um, for other parks. That was uh, concludes the eight and five update portion. So so Nina Gallo was not part of eight and five. Mm -hmm. It's just out on its own. And it's one of our biggest parks and that's gonna be construction. Did it go back out today? All right. So it will by the end of the month. It's in procurements queue. They're kind of backlogged right now. Um, there's a lot of projects going out and I know my team has three or four like proposals or things going out in BidNet right now and in June it's also in that queue. So get to those during staff updates. <laughs> Great. Any I mean, we had a lot of questions, but any, any last thoughts on this before we move on? From Sam? Okay. I guess, yeah, same question. Like, in terms of what's being proposed in the CIP, like, what's the feeling in terms of priority of these you know, elements in the CIP compared to other elements? Well, the park projects, the new parks are coming from the Park Improvement Fund, so we're not competing for those funds, which is nice. It's um, more the renewal projects are the ones where we can most for money. Um, having said that, you know, we have to balance our request for scope and our, our fund balance, our cash flow. So that's where it all becomes rather tricky from planning that. So. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, let's move on to discussing items from the packet. Anyone have any comments, uh, questions, or items from the packet they want to talk about? I had an item just kind of in the notes, and it mostly was just for you, Tanya, but um, we, we talked last time about a state landlord parcel next to Button Off that you guys were interested in, and I had mentioned to David that I would be happy to talk with you more about it because we've been doing some work on conservation and state landlord parcel, so I just wanted to make sure you knew that. <clears throat> if you're interested in talking more about conservation in partnership with state landlord, I would Sure, that would be great. Um, I did touch base with them the other day to get clear on when we could potentially fit in their queue, and it's in their fiscal year 2026, which starts in July. They can do two direct exchange transactions per year, so that's when there will be space for this to potentially occur. Great. And you guys would love to do a land exchange, not a like, purchase thing. Like no, they just call it the direct exchange process. We would be looking to purchase the property that we currently have a recreation lease on. Mm -hmm. um, our recreation lease currently expires in June 2025, so we, you know, that's paid by water resources, it's $10,000 a year, and we would re-up that in the interim time. Um, but speaking of state land board, they said there are various things that we can do between now and, and then. You know, we wouldn't want to get an appraisal, because it would, you know, it would, it would get stale by the time we're ready to get started. But um, there are other things we can do leading up to it. So sure, let's have a conversation. Yeah. Scott, um, and with uh, revenues uh, from uh, recreation, do you have a sense of like numbers in terms of like visitor numbers? Because it's hard to, I guess, it's been hard for me to like compare. Really apples to apples since the rates have gone up each year. Um, it's to, I mean, because obviously, yeah. Still um, happen, but. I'll put I'll put something in for next month. Um, I can tell you, given the rec center, um, Chris at the rec center does a report for us actually every week on attendance there, okay. and that is pretty much every week is above last year. Um, this last week was not, which is not surprising because a year ago it rained, and so people go to the rec center. This year, dry and hot, and people are out sunset, so that would be the difference. Um, but yeah, it's it's past what we were last year, um, similar to what we would have seen in like eighteen and nineteen. Okay. So, but I can I'll put something together next month and have that in. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And I, I mean I can tell you sunsets. <laughs> Which is, shouldn't be a surprise for anybody. Right? Yeah. 
You got another? I, I, have, I have another. Um, so, uh, I mean, it feels like Thompson Park is slipping. I mean, we're now only talking about granting It's going to be fenced by the end of the month as well. So right, yeah, I, I, but we were talking about like having it starting in earlier, right? So, right, so that um, we do, we did have two bidders, and that is right. great, yeah. and they're both qualified, and they were both very close to each other's costs. So, it really, they were two valuable bidders as opposed to what we experienced in other parts, right? Um, so, they're awarding that. I want to say it's next week, is when that contract gets, gets executed, okay. Is there an estimate? I don't know if there was an estimate on completion time. Um, whenever that. we get the contract with the executed with the contractor, then they'll give us the construction schedule, and okay. then we'll have that completion date. It's anticipated to go into quarter one of twenty five for Thompson. Okay. That's a part of my staff update as well. So um, I can share a photo with you. Uh, Sam, anything, any items in the packet you wanted to ask about? If not. Yeah, that one that I, that I meant to ask about last week or last month has been um, on the Resilient State Brain and the Boston Bridge and the Army Corps work on the upstream of that. The text in the packet update is a bit confusing. I wonder if there's a, a confirmation whether both the bridge and Army Corps have been awarded or the Army Corps is still pending award. The bridge is has been awarded, that's been under construction. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. The Army Corps project, it has not been awarded. Okay, the, the packet says that it has, so we're gonna get an amendment for next month oh. to update that. Well, I should rephrase what I just said. It hasn't started construction. Um, and I'll have to go back to the staff packet and see what Steve's update on that was. But they haven't started construction. And whenever they do, I know that because they're coming to the Dry Creek site, because they'll be coming through our fenced-in area to start moving material. So that hasn't that hasn't occurred yet. I want to say that was fall. I'll have to look back at the packet. Okay, maybe it asked to see if we'd be uh, just to update that next month because this query would be great. Were you able to get an answer on that? In real time? Uh, okay. No, I'm just I, I couldn't tell what year. I'm I, sorry. No, no worries. I just thought you were looking at some. Okay, uh, I had one more that I wanted to bring up myself, uh, which was about the white nose syndrome that's coming, that's I've seen this in the factor, at least for the first time this time, um, about bats uh, being found in Longmont with this white nose syndrome, all new to me. Uh, um, it sounds from what I'm reading about the description that like it can be really severe and we take out entire roosts of bats. Roosts. You never call that. Um, but I'd imagine that has a lot of knock on effects to an ecosystem. If all the bats are, uh, that, that would cause ripple effect of different things across the board. Um, right now, it's like we're in like just like monitoring state. Uh, but my question is like, is, uh, you know, is there anything more proactive we should be doing for this? And like, do we know like from other communities that have been affected by this, like what the impact could be, like, I don't want to catastrophize uh, some strange, like, you know, it's only two acts that we found, right? But still, it could be severe. So I wanted to ask about this. Um, well, let me okay. qualify this by saying I'm not a wildlife biologist. Yeah, yeah, fair. I'm sure that update was written by Scott Cedars, our wildlife biologist. Um, but, so, yes, white nose syndrome is uh, actually a serious problem, and it's already ongoing throughout the country, and it's humans getting into their habitats, like humans touring and walking into caves where bats and sensitive species live. And um, we've even seen this on some of our own properties. Um, so we, we've, you know, things that things that you can do if, if you have like a cave on your property and you're concerned about the bat habitat or you're aware that there are bats there, um, you can... Um, fence off the cave such that the bats can come in and out, but humans cannot, and that will protect them from white nose syndrome, because it's it's mm -hmm. humans that are walking in and introducing this, so mm. um, that gets added a little bit. I mean, there are, there are things that we can do. Um, you can work with the Colorado Division of Mines, and they will, they have a program to fund these exposures, 
Huh? So that, you know, if, if say a cave is at the mouth of a, of a creek, and, and the water needs to come in and out, and if you put a door there, then you'd be, you'd be affecting that habitat in a different way. Mm -hmm. Well, this, you know, cage with crosshatch, the sediment can come in and out, the bats can come in and out, but then humans cannot. But, you know, that, but I think, I mean, the Colorado Divisions of Mines probably has more information about it on their website. I mean, large mammals also use caves, so. Right. Um, you have to find a balance with that too. Find some woodworks also to track you in. Yeah, yeah. And and then I'm out of my depth. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Fair. Um that was actually really really uh, helpful. Okay, that. good. Something that I that I um caught my eye like that's hmm. Well I just was Is vacationing in West Virginia and we toured a cave and I was thinking about it and Yeah. Like we should guide, be here. The tour guide was really young, and he was telling his stories, and it was mostly folklore. But I was thinking about white nose syndrome. Right, right, <laughs> actual real life thing. Um, yeah. Thanks for that. Okay, um, makes me feel slightly better um, mm -hmm. knowing that there is like maybe something we can do. Okay, uh, any other items in the packet we want to talk about? Thanks. Yeah, I have one question. Yeah, Sam. There was a um, there was a nice little timeline on the screens here about uh, open space education activities, which is great. And Danielle, there was a mention of a presentation of open space, our past, present, and future on the 28th. Did that happen? It is actually happening tomorrow night on the 11th. And I'm sorry, I think I missed doing my updates this month, so mine are one month out of date. My apologies. So okay, no worries. I can get into more details because there's a series of things coming up and I can do it in my staff updates if you like. Yeah, I'm just looking forward to it as well, so I don't know whether it was in the recording or not, but that was great. I'm going to add the um, tax amounts of the different communities <laughs> to my informational presentation. <laughs> Fun. All right, so then let's move on to items from staff. So we got them, so let's end it with others. So other parks and trails projects. So we have a uh, Spring Gulch, Reach Two Phase Three. Um, so this one's still on schedule to open by the end of this month. So I don't know if you guys have seen any anything, because you would be sneaking up there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so they have got the pedestrian, the, the bridge, and the, the tunnel in that goes underneath the railroad tracks, um, which is pretty cool. Um, that was open <coughs> prior to this. This was on Friday. So now they're grading it down and through. Um, and that, so these two pictures are taken like right here, looking south. And, uh, right here actually. Um, so that is the last segment that needs to be poured and um, that's pretty exciting. So by next meeting, maybe we will have tried this. Yeah. You don't look very good. Yeah, well, you know, it's, I'm, just, I, I'm, still, I'm still excited. I mean, people are excited. So this will um, complete a loop. Uh -huh. so, um, it's a great, I mean, it's a great addition. Yeah, that segment, because now it's like you can just keep going and around. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, by school, I'm going to have a big ride yeah. probably a few weeks after it opens because we can't really plan for when it opens. Yeah. It's just there. Well, I'm hopeful. Uh, how have the neighbors been on that? I haven't heard anything about the neighbors. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, this is being managed by um, one of our streets engineers, project managers. And so, um, Trish on, on our team is helping her with some of the administrative pieces of that. So, I don't get a daily, like, Updates or anything, but Trish did go out and take all those pictures for us on Friday just to share with you guys. So. Um, Thompson Park, as I said, um, so the anticipated award date is this week with the construction um, contract execution on the 20th, and then it will immediately begin. So these are the areas that will be under construction. Um, we haven't received a site logistics plan yet. Once the contract is executed, we'll have that to know exactly what the extents of their fencing might be. Um, so, new shelter 
improvements to the restroom, new shelter, and then a somewhat different playground footprint and some new pads um, where they were more um, straight and now they're a little bit more organic to kind of follow some of those social paths that have been developed over time. Nino Gallo. So it's in the procurement team's queue. Um, it'll be posted by end of June. We've changed the scope to have a lot of ad alternates as well as um, added more money to that bucket. So hopefully between those two activities we'll have more realistic bids coming, coming in that we can move forward with. Um, all of the scope is still there. Um, just some minor modifications of quantities of like sidewalks, um, the type of restroom building that we're doing, wherever we could not detract from the park amenities, but provide a little bit more value for our dollars. So to make this a feasible project with the funding that we do have. Um, Garden Acres Bridge pedestrian replacement. That those proposals just came in. And I think at the first project meeting was actually just set up, that invite was sent out today. So this, um, here, as we're looking at the cricket pitch, um, this bridge will be replaced with one of the bridges we have in storage. The bridge that we have in storage is longer, so it may take a slightly different angle, which might actually benefit trail users on bikes, as it won't be so 90 degree-ish, but more on a, on a slant. So, Because um, most of the travel comes from this direction across and then continues. Where do you store a bridge like that out, out near the fire? By the sugar, by the wastewater. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's a place you don't go alone. <laughs> um, Roosevelt Park, that renewal, um, Elise is working on that statement of qualifications now to go out to design teams. Um, has been working with Jeff and Ben's teams on um, the adult fitness course piece to get some, um, they're starting the public engagement process on that and have, or will have some boards with some photos and questions, a survey um, at the rec center and at the senior center um, to start working and determining kind of, because they're going to do a, a playground and then the adult fitness course offside of that. So getting some feedback on what does that adult fitness course want to be? What does it want to have in it? So this one, um, Starting design now is as Thompson's just starting construction. Thompson will finish construction and then we'll do Roosevelt so that the two parks, one of the two is always open. Is there any plans to do something with the shelter that's mm -hmm. just walked up? Not for this renewal. The shelter's rentable and rented often. Everyone kind of started to it. It just seems a scary to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Better than it was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> People are just like, it's not scary at all. <laughs> Clean and nice yeah. inside, and we check out locks. There's a big, just a couple hundred people. That's how many we oh, yeah, yeah. There was a lock that had to be cut, it wasn't one of ours. So. But, <laughs> that was my Sunday morning. <laughs> um, the dog park. So, Steve's working with some internal city um, staff to quantify what this scope really wants to be with regard to where are we going to do the, get the big bang for our buck. Um, so they're just kind of talking through, you know, water, is there opportunities to have, I don't know, water at the dog park, um, where to place the shelter and, and whatnot. He's working on getting his proposals out to engage design as well. So that's just getting started. And I have phase 13. Oh, you put my, <laughs> okay. Um, so phase 13 is... Um, a little bit stuck in right-of-way acquisition process. Um, we're bringing this to City Council on June 25th and um, uh, hoping that'll help us move forward. Um, that's about it, all that's going on right now. We're trying to get out of this phase. We'd like to move into the next phase, which would be putting out an RFP for construction. So, um, can you remind me what, about the conflict? I remember hearing about it like that. We are we are just still negotiating with landowners and um, multiple landowners. multiple landowners. We've got multiple stakeholder private landowners along the trail, and um, 
most of the negotiations are going fine. There's except one. So um, that's what we're working on. Or right, is sorry. Go ahead. Since this is a CDOT funded project, we have a third party CDOT approved negotiator that that is doing all the negotiations with the landowners for us on our behalf. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just a slow process. Is archery going away? Yes, their lease is ending. Their lease technically ends December of this year, but well, they'll probably get to stay through their lease because of these right away negotiations. Um, but yes, they're, but they're aware when this lease is up, yep, yeah, Stuff okay. knows that, and Wes knows, but we're, it's, okay. unfortunately, yeah, the trail is going to go right through there and the construction, the two would be in conflict. Um, that's not to say that they can't come back when the trail is built. If, if, if the air, if, you know, we're not, we're not opposed to that. We just can't have them there during construction and that period of time is going to last. So we've been talking to them about, I, 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 they've been having trouble finding another space. And so I'm aware of that to be. If, um, if that design is reached hundred percent, can I ask if that design is shared if possible? On sure. Or, yeah. or, or to future avenues of time? Yes. Um, but I, I would just say, that, just to add on to, I guess, from why I'm saying that, um, I met with Lisa and Chair about Thompson Park a few weeks ago, and she shared the design documents that she had that were incredibly detailed and really built my confidence that a lot of questions I had were being taken into account around, for example, tree health and soil compaction and access and banks. I think generally the public and I certainly am, am hungry for information about these designs as they get are completed. And we discussed it maybe, maybe, maybe a year ago, you could share it at 30%, which makes sense, but one way to build public interest and maybe even um, show the public is in favor of this through that interest, so the lender might be more open to negotiating right away, is would be to show the progress that's been made, which is, this is going to be amazing, here's how great it looks. Probably all excited about it. Whereas right now, the website just says it's in design. And I think, you know, as soon as things are able to be shared, generally, I, I'm going to be asking for it. That's why I think that, that, that request. Right. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. Um, yeah. it, it's a little sticky with the private landowners when negotiations are still going on to yeah, share yeah, out a design publicly when we're not quite done with right away negotiations. So that's kind of why it's. Is it an issue of thinking that somehow we have deep pockets, or, or is it just an issue of, of how it winds across the project? Um, it's, it's just an issue of, of not agreeing on... Um, the landowner would like us to buy the entire parcel, and we would like us to just buy the trail right away. Okay. And we've been speaking to this landowner um, formally since May 2023. Mm -hmm. And um, we're unfortunately still at a bit of a standstill. Okay. So that, so more to come on June 25th. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so that's St. Green Greenway phase 13. Let me just see here. Oh, going back to the timeline the open space education timeline. So yeah, I put that in the prep packet and then the updates, items four and items four and five are upcoming and item four has the wrong date on it. So, so tomorrow night, June 11th, is the informational open space presentation to city council. It's very similar to the one that I gave to prep back in September, 2023. Um, and so that, that's tomorrow night, and then um, then coming this Friday, June 14th, uh, 
is the open space field trip. It's the same field trip that we did in, in 2023. We put it on the city calendar, city council crab, the public are invited. So um, depending on who shows up, we might caravan in people's own cars. We have some city cars um, for the city council members and crab members that have um, RSVPDS for that. That's the 14th? That's the 14th. Yep, and we're meeting at the upper parking lot at Sandstone. Okay. And going from there, and it'll be natural resource staff, and then Jane Turner, our oil and gas specialist. I was looking for that for days. I thought I had missed it, and I. Was, you didn't miss it. It's coming. No, I just coming. was looking for it. I, I kept looking for it in my email, trying to figure out who had sent it, and I it was sitting in the back of my mind, but I kept trying to remember where I had seen it. So. I'm glad I you you mentioned that because I'm like uh, I was afraid I had missed it to be honest with you. Yeah, it's time does it start? Uh, it starts at ten. Um, so if anybody changes their mind, all are welcome. Um, it was hard to come up with a date and time. And this is it. Uh, we're gonna meet. We're gonna meet at the Sandstone Ranch, yeah. like soccer parking. The one closer to the visitor center, but not across from the visitor center. The big parking lot before you get to the visitor center, and the upper parking. It's not the upper parking lot. It's not the across from the visitor center. It's before before that. So the group shelter. Yeah, we have this big the group bond. shelter. Exactly. Sure. You guys can describe it better than me. <laughs> Do you have a likely route or anything? Like if I was able to join for part of it and just have to in my own car so I could leave before you were done? Um, yes, I can try and send that. I think we're doing the same route that we did last year, so let me see if I can pull that together and get that. I'm getting a list of how to send in this long email here to Crab. <laughs> <laughs> we have any other items from staff? Ben? Sure. Uh, 4th of July. We're yeah. looking towards an event that night, as you all know. Fireworks will be shot off at the uh, truck fire training center. We're working with uh, Woodby Brewing um, for and the cops and, and all sorts of groups trying to uh, get something going in a very short timeline. Uh, everybody's really really chipped in. Um, Woodby's been a big help. Um, did some uh, incredible administrative gymnastics with liquor licensing to allow that their license to expand to the streets, and so basically the, the plus of those streets. Um, second and... Emory. Emory. Um, and we'll have orange fence around there, and um, the Kiwanis is helping with some gate guards with liquor control, um, working on games for kids, uh, working on bands, working on uh, symphony, so it's all in the works and going to happen. To pull together in such a short time. Yeah, it's some. <laughs> um, starting about five o'clock on the fourth, so we'll we'll be out there. You know, we'll be yeah. out there at that time. And the day of the fourth at at uh, Roosevelt is the symphony stuff. Right? I symphony uh, first I, round. Yeah, first, first round. round yeah. Right. First round. Yes. Yeah. I haven't personally read. No, no, I know, I know. I, would, I, I think there was a press release that went out today that covered both of those. Okay. So, um, yeah, any questions on it? It's it's happening. It's going to be, be fun. Right, keep it as simple as possible for <laughs> cops and staff and us and everybody else. Any other updates? <coughs> yeah, it should be an amazing event. Okay, uh, then we're going to move on to items from the board. Do you have any other items you want to raise outside of the packet updates? I was just wondering if you, since I wasn't able to help the crowd in member interviews, mm -hmm. how that's going? So it was very odd this year. Mm -hmm. So we, we had six candidates. Um, Thomas joined us for one of the interviews. Um, ben, David, and I did. We're in all three of them. 
that one person withdraw to be considered for a different board and two of the candidates would not respond, respond to our um, emails or phone calls to schedule uh, an interview. So um, Hannah, I spaced her last name, um, but we made a recommendation to council to appoint her. I believe council is doing some of their own interviewing this Saturday, and then they will make appointments uh, at their June 25th meeting. Which would mean that we would have an additional number by July. In July, yep. Great, thanks. Um, yeah, and any improvements in terms of like future of the website? Do you guys know any of this? Because this, this kind of speaks to Sam's issue of communication. Well, I, and everybody's like, well, wait until the new website comes. But, you know, we're like a two year old thing. I mean, I, well, not, I, I mean, I don't want to defend them, believe me, on that. But I, I think it's actually been a really short timeline compared to the last one, which was, I, well, that was, was like six was, years. That was, yeah. So, um, but I think it's moving along. Even what I've heard that July, there. I, I don't know. I heard July, but I. You know, we will. We will weeks. be ready to report on that at next month's meeting. Okay. So, kind of a right. time frame. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, because just as things happen, whether it's you know, these yeah. groups, any other groups, that just never seems to be a plan of how to update information on the website. And has to go through like one central command, it's never going to be a good thing that works. You have to let departments speak to the website. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. um, I've yet to hear what the policy is in that. So. On our parks and trails development page, we do work with them frequently to update our park statuses on our projects. I don't know if you've been to those lately. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But, it, you know, we, we just added, I think it was on Friday, the revised Clover. Um, rendered site plan just so that the neighbors would have easy access to it and whatnot. So we we do have frequent communications with them. And I know we have Fox Meadows construction starting up um, going on the website that was so for discussions today as well as um, there was something going out for Dry Creek, I can't recall what it was, but just to kind of get words out there. So okay. Sam? Any no? Okay. Uh, okay, then I guess we can move to the last item on the agenda, which would be adjournment. A motion to adjourn. Yeah, I'll go to the meeting. <laughs> there a second? Second. I was going to say, Mason. All those in favor? All right, we have a quorum. That's great. We're adjourned.